Dr. Gonzo, just say it, T-Bob. Georgia is three-peating. Look, we talked about it on last night's show. I feel, you know, before the season, nothing has changed in some ways from before the season where I said, look, they'll run through the schedule, they'll win the FCC, but ultimately they'll lose in the playoffs. I thought that was for sure. I'm not so sure on that anymore. There's a lack of an elite team and a Georgia team that's appreciating massively in value. Like they're getting better and better every week. Carson Beck looks awesome. They look like the most complete team. They've got weapons. They got the best defense. So starting to feel like Georgia might win a third national championship room. Maybe. Mm. Maybe. Let's not mm. go crazy. Okay. Shut up. Um, but if they're going to. They're going to have to go into kneeling this weekend and come out with a win, Aaron Murray. Mm -hmm. Georgia, Tennessee, 230, CBS, electric environment. Tennessee wins. <laughs> How? <laughs> <laughs> so good, so good. Uh, Tennessee wins if they do everything that they have not been able to do this entire season when it comes to offensive production. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. I mean, like, all <laughs> can you find can you find a way to create explosive plays through the air? Like that that to me is the only way Tennessee can find a way to win. So two things. Like one, that the fans have to be in it. Georgia, and you love to talk about this, so I'll, I'll I'll reiterate it. You brought it up all year. Georgia's played one true away game this entire season at yeah. Auburn. Georgia, Florida, neutral site at Vanderbilt is a home game. That's ninety percent Georgia fans are. Go back to that Auburn game. Kind of close. What Georgia went twenty seven twenty. Four quarter bout battle. I think Georgia's better than they were then. Carson's better. The offense is better. They're healthy. Um, so like it's a different Georgia team, but still, like you have not played but one true away game. So can Nealon, which is an absolute bear to play in, you you saw it last year. It is Dude, crazy. I played there my it's, senior it's year a tough against place a to not good Tennessee team, but mm -hmm. it was packed and they were yeah. loud and you could not hear yourself. No. So like the Tennessee fans got to show up, which I think they will. Rivalry game, they will. they'll be loud. They'll they'll make it difficult. So like that's that's one thing that could you know help your 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 you know eleven guys on the field. And then too, like I said, like for Tennessee offensively, you have to create explosive plays in the air. Like to think that you're just going to methodically move the ball down the field through the run game. And I know you maybe think like Georgia's weakness is the the, the front seven. I, it it may be a weakness, but it's still stronger than what you have for your offensive line and your running back. So you got to create some explosives and they haven't been able to do that all year. So unless it just magically happens, I don't think this Tennessee team, which has been stopped by Georgia two years in a row, like Kirby smarts got this offense kind of figured out. I just don't think it's going to magically all of a sudden appear and have a monster game, unfortunately for, for, for the Vols. Yeah. So somebody said Tennessee's mid at everything. I mean, I disagree with that. I think Tennessee's pretty elite on the lines, right? There's a reason why they, they lead in um, elite's a strong word, right? But I think they're damn good on both lines of scrimmage. There's yep. a reason why they were able to jump out to a 20 to seven lead over Alabama. Uh, there's a reason why they lead in like rushing categories and are either first or second in sacks and TFLs. And it's because they're, they're really good in the trenches. Mm -hmm. um, the problem is because of their offensive flaws, most of which emanate out of Joe Milton, even though he's been playing better lately. Yes. But because of those flaws, they they have trouble beating a better team over a full 60 minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, and Alabama is the, the great example of that. And so um, it's going to be an awesome environment. Certainly last time we saw Georgia in a tough environment, Auburn gave them everything they wanted. And then some, um, and, and like I said, I love Tennessee in the trenches. I'm a Josh Heupel believer. I think mm -hmm. the fact that you're kind of as good as you are without a quarterback speaks very well to the future because he will get great quarterback play again. And so I think Tennessee's in a great spot long term, but this isn't about Tennessee. Mm -mm. Uh, this is about UGA. And UGA just feels too complete at this point. Yeah. I mean, what is UGA bad at? Like, what are they actually bad at? They're, they're Tennessee, not. like you could say, you could say they're bad at explosive plays. They're they're slightly bad at quarterback. Um, Georgia, you're going to say, okay, like for instance, people want to say the rush defense, right? Well, let's just look up where they rank in the SEC in rush defense. Uh, Their second. rush defense is second. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Give give up 107 yards. Well, a game. I, we haven't seen that. All, I've been saying it all there. season. Like people keep saying, like this defense is not this that or the other. It's like no, they are. They're they're really damn good. They're just not what they've been. We can't yeah, this defense isn't that good, seasons. but they're first in the SEC, giving up 15 points a game. Yeah, they're second. And they're in, first in the SEC in total defense, giving up 289. First in pass <laughs> defense, second in rush defense. It's it's a really talented group. 
they're then too you look complete. at the offense too. Yeah, they're too complete. Offensively, there's not a weakness. Offensive line's healthy. The running backs are healthy. We got a little bit. And, and, and listen, Ole Miss, we've said it all year. Ole Miss is not a physical football team, and that played out. Played out versus Alabama. It yeah. played out versus Georgia. You're, they're going to get bullied around there. Finesse football team, that was not a good matchup for the Rebels, and Georgia ran away with the football game. Tennessee is more physical in the, in the line of scrimmage on both sides, offensive line, defensive line. It's like that's an area they can match up. Think think kind of Missouri two weeks ago for, for Georgia. Why did Missouri make that an interesting ball game? Because they can somewhat match up in the in the trenches versus Georgia. Yeah. And I think Missouri's a little bit more physical. They showed that last week versus Tennessee. They're, they're, they're the better football team this year. But Tennessee is a good matchup at home. If that defense line can get off with some crowd noise, maybe create some turnovers, maybe make Carson feel like he's a little rattled in the pocket, something he hasn't been this year, that's another way they can make it interesting. So I want to be clear, like, I think Georgia maybe pulls away at the end. Tennessee's going to have some moments. Like, I, well. On offense or defense? Um, I guess like I didn't where? think about it. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Well, I mean, look. I mean, they found some offensive moments early against Alabama, and if you yeah. can do that against Alabama's defense, you can do that against Georgia's defense, especially at especially home. the first, especially the first um, drive. They'll and like, yeah, I could, I could see, field. I could see. I mean, we saw what happened in the Georgia offense in a tough environment. Jordan Hare, they're gonna be bad on some of those same things against a better team. So no, like I said, like I think Tennessee. I think now I could all see Georgia blowing them out, but I think Tennessee will have some moments uh, in that first half, but. They like I said, I think it just boils down to the fact they're just there's not enough consistency to keep pace with UGA for 60 minutes because they mm -hmm. can't claim a real advantage anywhere on the field. So give me the Bulldogs. What's the spread? Now that we're choosing that, I'm 11? just curious. I think somewhere on the 10 and a half, 11. Hmm. Uh, I'll be interested to ask Colin Wilson tomorrow about that. Uh, here we go. We got uh, Wilk with a five dollars super chat. Aaron will be will you be charged for assaulting a man on live television? I, I'm guessing he's referencing your Collinsworth slide in, in which you shoulder bumped very aggressively your 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 co host multiple times. How did he feel? Did you tell him you were going to do that? No, did not. And it was not a slide wow. in. Like I was there, and so what we did was the head coach for Western Michigan gave it. We actually went into the locker room to hear his pregame speech, and it was so good that your boy had it like felt like I was going to run through a wall. And Hell yeah, just, I didn't realize that he had, you know, my, my, my partner is my first time working with him really hasn't been lifting the weights lately, I guess. Uh, he kind of just fell over pretty aggressively. I didn't feel like I hit him too hard, but he kind of, <laughs> uh, my bad. Wait, 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 wait. The gift that I saw, he just bumped over. You hit him so hard that he fell. No, no, no. He didn't. He, fell fell over. Oh, he, okay. he, he, he kind of oh, jolted yeah, a yeah, yeah, easier yeah, than I jolted. thought he would though. Yeah. Okay. I'm just, making sure, I'm just making sure I had it right. Uh, T. Bob and Aaron, what are the chances Brock playing this week against the Vols? Well, he already played, right? So he's going to play again. Yeah. Did I miss he's something? He's playing again. In the news? No. Okay, cool. He's playing. So UGA wins.